Welcome to the Navigating Magic podcast, where we explore the interplay between intuition, spiritual health, and your superconscious through conversations, interviews, and storytelling. Natasha teaches you how to generate change through your attention to energies, truths, and processes that are invisible to others. Together, we will explore the interplay between alchemy, astrology, and theurgy. I'm your host, Natasha Andreo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Natasha Andreo podcast. Today, we have a very special guest on our seventh episode. Brad Yates is a known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom technique, often known as EFT. Brad is the author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish, the co-author of the bestseller Freedom at Your Fingertips and a featured expert in the film The Tapping Solution. He has also been a presenter at a number of events, including Jack Canfield's Breakthrough to Success, has done teleseminars with The Secret stars Bob Doyle and Dr. Joe Vitale, and he has been heard internationally on a number of internet radio talk shows. Brad also has over 1,000 videos on YouTube that have been viewed over 37 million times. You can find out more at tapwithbrad.com. And thank you, Brad, for being here. Oh, my pleasure, Natasha. I'm very happy to be here. Now, I, um, I'm i a bit embarrassed to say this. Well, no, there's, there's no embarrassment. I <laughs> Even tap... though I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I tap to your YouTube videos every single day without fail. Well, and I hope you're not embarrassed about that. No, of course not. <laughs> I feel like a fangirl here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because the days that I don't tap are the days that I notice that I haven't tapped. And that's what led me to really understand what tapping is. And I share this with my students. And like they've, they've, some of them are young, some of them are adults, and they absolutely love it. So I would love to know... What is it that got you into tapping? Hey, how does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always knew that this is what I was destined to do. No, um, I actually was an actor and uh, had toured the world doing theater and went to Hollywood to be a movie star, as one does. And while I was there, I met a woman, fell in love, got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought I should probably have a backup career to help me support this family. <laughs> so I had always been fascinated with the power of the mind. So actually I trained to become a hypnotherapist as my, as my backup job. And so I started building a, a small practice and was doing the acting thing and the hypnosis thing for a couple of years until our second child was on the way. And I realized as much as I loved acting, personal development work was really my calling. It's like this, this is what really fulfills me. This is what I really feel like I'm here to do. And we left Los Angeles, moved to Northern California. And through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about this energy psychology conference going on in Las Vegas, where they're doing this tapping thing. And for anyone who's not familiar with tapping, uh, emotional freedom technique or EFT, we are literally tapping on our face. And the first time people see it, they think that's kind of weird. In my time as an actor, I had gone to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. So this was not the strangest thing I'd ever done at this point. So I'm a little <laughs> more open to it than a lot of folks might be. And I just found it fascinating, especially when in a matter of moments, I uh, tapped away a chocolate craving. So I thought, wow, there's, there's something to this, uh, this tapping thing. And got home from the conference and I started introducing it at the end of my uh, hypnotherapy sessions. Little by little, it was more and more about the tapping until they became tapping sessions to a little bit of hypnosis at the end. Mm, isn't that interesting? The reversal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's incredible. I didn't know you were an actor, but I guess now I can see your 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 characters come out in your EFT videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I played one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So obviously the fact that you had such success early on, it meant that obviously your heart was just so drawn to this. Um, what are some common um, reactions you get from people when you offer from your clients when 
you ask them, hey, would you like to tap with me? And this is, would be way back then because now obviously <laughs> people would come to you specifically for typing. Right. With, with over a thousand videos on YouTube, if people uh, show up at my doorstep, they already know what we're going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, back then, and admittedly, when, when folks had come to me as a hypnotherapist, at that time, they were already a little bit more open to oh, okay. uh, to things. But, you know, it looked a little strange. And even today, I'll, st I'll still meet people and, you know, some people will be more open to it and be like, okay, that sounds interesting. You know, we talk about it being like acupuncture, but without needles. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and most folks have heard of acupuncture and a lot of folks don't like needles. So it's like, oh, okay. That sounds like a good combination. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, that's why I put the videos out there is trying to get more and more people aware of it so that we don't have to have this discussion of i know it looks strange trust me it's not a weird woo woo thing it's got a, a growing body of scientific evidence backing it up mm. so yeah so i mean for the most part uh, when i when i bring it up to folks they're they're more open to it yeah yeah amazing so i guess people sometimes uh, a bit skeptical to things like this and then it's not until they try it that they are able to see the difference so I, I like I'm really curious do you have any stories of people who were skeptical and what were they dealing with and then how did EFT help them overcome said issue yeah I I, I see this a lot on my YouTube channel I'll see comments from people saying I dismissed this when I first saw it because I thought it looked stupid. Now I tap every single day. Uh, just like you were saying, you, you tap every day and you notice the difference. And I just want to be clear for everyone, this is not a dependency thing where once you start tapping, you're going to have to do it every day or there's going to be a problem. It's not that at all. It's that we primarily tapping is a stress relief technique. And most of us are not aware of how much stress we're carrying. So we, we go through our days with at least an ambient level of stress. You know, sometimes we are very stressed out about certain events, sometimes just an ambient level of stress. We're all walking around with a little device that's constantly saying, here's something else to be upset about. And we just take it for granted and let that stress build up. So when we clear that, it's like, oh, I thought I was okay. I thought I was in a normal zone, but now I'm aware I can be at more peace. Mm -hmm. So as we get a greater awareness of, it can be better than it is for most people on a daily basis. That's when we start to notice, oh, I'm not allowing myself that same level of self-care. Yes. So, uh, yeah. And when I see someone who makes a comment on YouTube where it's like, yeah, that doesn't work. This is um, stupid. I know that it's resistance because we resist change. Mm. We're afraid of change for the most part. You know, we, we like things to be in, to be familiar. So someone comes along and says, hey, you can do this simple technique and it's going to sh create shifts where you can create change and have things be, be better in your life. It's like, no, no, you get away from me. Stop it. And, and so the fact that it does look a little strange makes it easier for people to be dismissive and, and push it away and say, oh, no, no, no. I, I definitely want uh, better things in my life, but I'm not going to do something that looks stupid like that. Mm. And, and so it's like, all right that that's fine. You're, you're not ready for this. There's, there's a level of fear there. And I have yeah, over the years have had a number of comments and had people say to me, yep, that was me. I was resistant. And now I'm, I'm so grateful that, uh, that I pushed through that and tried it again. Mm, so interesting. It's funny that you say that it looks funny because I'm often tapping at the traffic lights and I always sense the people stop by beside me, look at me, and I'm just like, oh, well, if only you knew, <laughs> I should turn down my windows. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, I took a clip from Princess Bride from the, the fight scene. And it's like, you know, if, I imagine if people say, why are you tapping on your face? Because I know something you don't know. <laughs> I, I know that this can, can make you feel better. I'll, I'll tap at traffic lights. Um, you know, I was uh, on a very bumpy flight home yesterday and I was on the plane saying, all right, it's a little bumpier than I like it to be. 
people might see me or not, but I, I know how it calms down stress. So if I'm in a situation like if somebody cuts me off in traffic and there's another car pulled up alongside me, it's like, what are they going to think of me? It's like, I'd rather let go of this discomfort and, you know, they might think I look like an idiot. They might be somebody who knows tapping and they might go, oh, you know what? I should tap on. I, I actually have some anxiety that I wasn't really paying attention to. I should clear some too. And that's what I like to imagine is that at a certain point, enough people will know about it that if you see somebody on the street corner tapping, folks will be like, oh, that's a good idea. I, I should do some tapping right now. That would make my life better too. So true. And I think like science is catching up now with what people in the, you know, energetic spiritual world have known for, for eons. <laughs> yep. So it's, yeah, it's coming out there. Just, just up the coast from you, Dr. Peter Stapleton in Gold Coast is doing all kinds of great research validating the effect is, effectiveness of tapping on, uh, on stress. You know, there's cortisol studies with cortisol levels, cortisol being uh, one of the main stress hormones and seeing a dramatic decrease in that when we do the tapping. She's done fMRI studies where we can see the brain activity where the parts of the brain are lit up and after tapping those parts have calmed down and normalized. So it's, yeah, it's really fantastic to have that so that when people say, well, it looks stupid, where's the research? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if you've um, got any YouTube videos on this, but I've started tapping with my animals. So I've got five bunny rabbits. Awesome. And they're beautiful little creatures, but they can be vulnerable to stresses. Yes. Um, and most animals, when you move homes, um, the change of environment, you know, different, with the bed's different, the direction, the geopathical stress, all of that plays a role um, in the animal's life. So when we moved beforehand and afterwards, I would tap on their little heads and, um, you know, rabbits don't like you touching on their paws. Sometimes they get a bit um, apprehensive, but do you have any um, insight about how people can tap with their animals? Yeah. I, I don't have any videos on that myself. I do have colleagues who work primarily with animals. Yeah. Uh, I have done it on different pets of my own. Uh, we used to tap sometimes on our German Shepherd and she's no longer with us, but uh, with our cat now. And, and, and even if it's not specifically tapping, you know, um, you know, one of the things he loves is when you rub over his head and uh, you're covering all kinds of uh, meridian points when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And then also, if, if you have an animal that doesn't want to be tapped, you can do surrogate tapping. So I do have a video on surrogate tapping where you tap on yourself for the sake of someone else because everything is energy. We're all connected. So we can do some of that work on ourselves and have it be beneficial with the intention for someone else, yeah. uh, including a pet. Of course. And that will obviously work with humans as well, the surrogate. Yes. Tapping. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. So interesting. Um, I started, there was one day, I, I'm a casual teacher at the moment. I quit full time because of the stress <laughs> and I, um, I do a lot of casual teaching and only last month I had a year four class. So they were 10 years old and I just noticed, um, stress, like the students were stressed about things that they didn't need to be stressed about. And, you know, because I'm a casual, I'm new in the room. I don't know much about their backgrounds and what's going on at home and all the things. However, there was a moment in the day where we had a little gap, but I asked them, would you like to try something new? And so like eager little beavers, they all sat down and I just explained, um, well, I asked them questions. I said, hands up if you know what stress is. And they all put their hands up. Um, and then I just asked them, what are you stressed about? You know, and they all had things like, you know, parents um uh you know things re relating to their sports relating to their schoolwork typical things that 10 year olds are stressed about <laughs> that we would probably go oh you poor thing yeah and after we tried the video well, it was one of your videos I just it was just have have an amazing day mm. that's probably my, my go-to favorite and the students there if you could see energy the room just dissipated they're feeling that they almost didn't want to speak afterwards because they were like, oh, what is this? Yeah. And then I had comments that the following week where the students were begging me to come back 
And then they wanted to know your name. They wanted to know how they could find you because of just how much that, you know, and obviously they went home and tried it as well. And I encourage them to try it every day, but I just love how young people are able to take this on. Good. And the school didn't get any complaints, I hope. No, no. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Because that's the thing is there are a lot of people doing great efforts to get tapping into the schools. And that's why I wrote uh, my children's book, The Wizard's Wish, because so many of the issues that we face as adults started in childhood. And, you know, I may be, I may have a fear of speaking, which is holding back my professional career because in the third grade, I had to do an oral report and I messed up on a word and the kids laughed at me and I decided I can't ever do this. So if in the third grade, if a teacher had been able to say, even though I messed up on a word, I'm still a great kid and had tapped through it, who knows what could be different in my life? Who knows the impact that I might be having? Mm -hmm. So, you know, all of us have gifts and talents to share and so many of those gifts and talents are limited because of childhood experiences and to be able to have kids have that that resource to to clear that out and feel much better uh, is, is just amazing uh, again PETA has a program called tap it in the classroom where it teaches teachers how to use it the country of Slovenia as I understand it actually paid for their teachers to go through that course Wow. So I'm mean, just imagine if it was in all, every school where kids would learn how to deal with that stress. You know, on test day, kids are coming in and you have no idea what's going on for them. You know, one kid may have had a great morning and has come in and is all ready. The other kid, another kid may have started the day with his parents having a huge fight and maybe a parent leaving or, or something else mm -hmm. and is coming in, you know, in suboptimal levels to then try to be academic. Yeah. So to have something that, uh, you know, allows us to process that stress and then be at our best, you know, feeling better and doing better is tremendous. Mm. Um, I think the, the stresses, like you said, that start at an early young age, they amplify um, as an adult. And you can see it with people who well, I know within myself and like my husband, our stresses as adults, you can really pinpoint back to our childhood what the stress was. And if, like you said, if we are able to help young people with this, I think the world would be a much different place. And the next generation has, like they have this at their fingertips. Literally. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> And, you know, the connection between stress and um, not just mental health, but I think physical ailments constantly, like I think um, statistically speaking, over 90% of doctor's visits are due to stress. So what do we do? Let's eliminate the stress. Yeah. Most, if not all of the issues that bother us physically and emotionally are either caused by or worsened by stress. Mm. Now, if only there was something we could do about that stress. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and something simple that literally is at our fingertips. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, there are a lot of great things for helping to reduce our overall levels of stress. Getting a better diet, getting a good night's sleep, exercising regularly, uh, taking walks, meditating. Those things are all great. In that moment when something stressful has happened, you can't go back and get a better night's sleep the night before. You can't go and get a healthier diet. And unless you've been meditating for years, you're probably not going to be able to sit down and get into a quiet space in that moment to lower your uh, stress levels. And this is just a simple tool for downregulating that stress response and allowing mm -hmm. ourselves to calm down. You know, and when we're, when we're stressed out, the prefrontal cortex, which is where our rational creative thinking is, goes offline. We go into fight or flight and we don't make the best choices and that has all kinds of unfortunate consequences so that's the the sympathetic nervous system when we go into that state of stress and then the parasympathetic nervous system is when uh we get the all clear it's like okay danger is over we can come back to thinking from here and so this is expediting that so mm -hmm. if we're in that place where it's like oh my god well we want to be tapping down, go, okay, what's really going on here? What's the best solution? What do I really want to do 
to uh, change the situation. Mm. And I think because like, again, we keep coming back to science because even like quantum science at the moment has recently come to the conclusion that everything is connected. Mm. And we've known for, for a while now, thanks to Einstein, that everything is energy. And when you tap or for, for me personally and within my, my with my clients and my um, the students that I'm exposed to when I tap it's like the world around me changes well that's the perception and that's and this thing Natasha whether it's the world is changing or your perception but for all we know the world only exists in what how we perceive it so you know there's no one who can say it's just your perception or it is the world's like as my experience if i calm down my experience of the world is improved if uh if if it appears to me that you're going through something difficult and i tap to calm down what I, how i'm responding to that and you seem calmer i may not know whether you are not but as far as i can tell from my experience things for you have changed mm. and so you know, and that just spreading that and, you know, if we can clean up our corner of the street, then we're contributing to the overall piece of the collective whole. Yeah, incredible. So true. And so like we can tap for what are some things that we can tap for? What do you suggest? <laughs> some, some, some topics what, other than everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what what can you not tap for? There, there's an expression in, in EFT, try it on everything. But, uh, well, it's, uh, you know, having a, a, because everything is connected, you know, it's the old, the old line of let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. So maybe we could do a tapping round on just experiencing more personal peace that then has a benefit uh, for the outside world. Mm. You know, and I know that, uh, you know, you often talk about both health and home and it's like, okay, so let's uh, look at that, you know, ex expanding that piece improves both. Yeah. So what I'd invite folks to do is go ahead and close your eyes, take a deep breath in and hold it and let it go. Now just following your breath through your body, just allowing yourself to be present right now. Notice what you're feeling physically and what you're feeling emotionally. And maybe rate your level of peace on a scale of zero to 10. So actually, let's, let's switch it around. So let's, we can look at what might not be peace, whatever discomfort you might be experiencing. And it might be physical, could be emotional, mental. And rate that discomfort on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being there's no peace to be had whatsoever. Zero would be complete Zen. And don't judge yourself harshly if the number is higher than you thought it might be. Most of us aren't aware of how much stress we're carrying, how much discomfort we're tolerating. Just allow yourself to be aware of what that is. Notice what thoughts, beliefs, or memories might contribute to whatever is not feeling like peace. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Open your eyes. And so just uh, we're going to take the fingertips of the index and middle finger. I'm going to gently tap on our opposite hand. Now, the meridians that have been used in acupuncture for thousands of years, that's what we're tapping on. It uh, They run up and down both sides of the body. So you can tap with either hand on either side of the body, or you can also tap with both hands at the same time, whatever feels right for you. But uh, I'll just be doing it with my right hand for the sake of simplicity. And we start off with uh, just noticing what might be bothering us. So um, so I'll just, I'll just use the term stress to as an example of what is not peace. <laughs> And uh, we'll rate that on a scale of zero to 10, as you've already done. You've rated that, that discomfort. So we'll tap here on the side of the hand and say, even though I feel this stress. Even though I feel this stress. I choose to love and accept myself. I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I feel this stress. Even though I feel this stress. I choose to love and honor myself. 
I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I feel this stress. Even though I feel this stress. And it's limiting my sense of peace. It's limiting my sense of peace. Even though I feel this stress. Even though I feel this stress. I choose to deeply and completely. I choose to deeply and completely. Love, honor, and accept myself. Love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who contributes to it. Maybe anyone else who contributes to it. Because I choose to be that free. Because I choose to be that free. I'm tapping right here at the beginning of your eyebrow. All this stress. All this stress. Right here at the side of your eye. All this stress. All this stress. And as we're doing these points, we're usually tapping between five and ten times. But don't don't worry about counting. It's, it's okay if it's not that number. Right under the middle of your eye. All this stress. All this stress. Under your nose. All this stress. All this stress. Just below your lower lip, above your chin. All this stress. All this stress. Right here where your collarbones just about come together. There's a little U shape at the base of your throat. And you can use all of your fingertips or even make a fist and tap over that area. All this stress. All this stress. How about four inches below your armpit. So it's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even the guys can figure out where that is. All this stress. All this stress. Now with all of your fingertips, just tap it around the crown of your head. All this stress. All this stress. Take a deep breath. So now that's the basic version of EFT where you notice what's going on for you and you just use the same phrase over and over. And for many people, you may already feel your number lower. We're going to continue now and play a little bit with it. So all this stress. All this stress. All these things that are bothering me. All these things that are bothering me. All this stuff that does not feel like peace. All this stuff that does not feel like peace. Because I'd rather feel peace. Because I'd rather feel peace. I'd rather see peace in the world. I'd rather see peace in the world. And since I'm part of the world. Since I'm part of the world. If I can feel more peace. I can feel more peace. That makes the world a more peaceful place. That makes the world a more peaceful place. As Gandhi said. Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Let it begin with me. So that means letting go of what isn't peace. That means letting go of what isn't peace. All that stuff that I hold on to. All that stuff that I hold on to. That feels stressful. It feels stressful. And it's not that I'm bad or stupid. Not that I'm bad or stupid. It's not that I'm weak or lazy. Not that I'm weak or lazy. It's just that I have a lot of old programming. It's just that I have a lot of old programming. About what should upset me. About what should upset me. How upset I should get. How upset I should get. And how long I should be upset. And how long I should be upset. If I felt more peace. If I felt more peace. Part of my programming would say that was wrong. Part of my programming would say that was wrong. Part of me would say. Part of me would say, look at what's going on in the world. Look at what's going on in the world. Look at what's going on in your life. Look at what's going on in your life. You should be stressed out. You should be stressed out. You should be upset. You should be upset. And I do my due diligence. I do my due diligence. And I hold on to that stress and upset. And I hold on to that stress and upset. And, and while I'm tapping now. And while I'm tapping now. I'm giving myself permission. I'm giving myself permission to reconsider. Reconsider. Because it begs the question. It begs the question. How is my stress helping? How is my stress helping? I can't get upset. I can't get upset. Enough to make a positive difference. Enough to make a positive difference. And part of me might say. Part of me might say. Being upset will motivate me to make a difference. Being upset will motivate me to make a difference. And that might be possible. And that might be possible. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say that. But they just get stressed and don't do anything. They just get stressed and don't do anything. And since everything is energy. Since everything is energy. And we're all connected. And we're all connected. My stress contrib contributes to the overall stress. My stress contributes to the overall stress. I'm allowing myself to clear that. I'm allowing myself to clear that. And if that's all that I do. That's all that I do. I'm already making a positive difference. 
already making a positive difference. But as I clear the stress, I clear the stress, I can think more clearly. Think more clearly. And I might come up with other things that I can do. I come up with other things I can do that will make a positive difference. It will make a positive difference. Either way. Either way. As I clear what does not feel like peace. As I clear what does not feel like peace. I'm making a positive difference for myself and others. Making a positive difference for myself and others. And I'm letting myself do that. I'm letting myself do that. In body, mind, and spirit. In body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. And I'll invite folks to just close their eyes and just go inside and check again. If zero is Zen and 10 is uh, very upset, just allow yourself to, to be aware of how that number may have come down. For some folks, it may have dropped dramatically. For some, it might be just a little bit. And even if it doesn't drop much, you may just have greater clarity about, oh, but I, now I know what's bothering me. And I have some ideas about what I can do about that. Yeah. It's a real talking meditation. Um, for someone like me, like I, I love astrology <clears throat> and I've got the planet Mars. I don't know if you know much about astrology, but Mars is in my 12th house and Mars is very active and passionate and fiery. And the 12th house is everything unseen. Mm. So with that placement in my chart, I find it very hard to just sit and meditate. There's always something going on in the mind. And so when I do EFT every morning, that is my meditation. Meditation does not have to look like you sitting at the top of a mountain, closing your eyes, <laughs> your inner, you know, higher wisdom. It's this, this is because I walk in, in one state and I come out a completely different person. Yeah. They're just different types of mindfulness practices. Exactly right. And, and the words can be beneficial, but if you're in a place of anxiety, don't worry about the words. Don't sit there and go, Oh, I feel really stressed out, but I'm not sure what I should say. That's why I do the, the first version where I just say the same word, the stress, stress, stress. So you can see it doesn't have to be clever. But when you're feeling stressed, you don't even have to say that. The words are helpful when we are, you know, talking about something that may not be present in the moment. And it can be helpful in all kinds of different ways. But when we are already experiencing some physical and or emotional distress, just the tapping itself is going to be calming down that stress response. For sure. Yeah. And what I love about it, and it's like there are thousands of videos online on YouTube and Google and whatnot um, on EFT. But I honestly can say, because I, I have tried some others, but I keep coming back to your videos. And that's because there's no nonsense. You get straight to the point. You've got a bit of dad humor in there, which I like <laughs> as well. <laughs> it lightened things up a bit. But you do tell a story with the tapping. There's a few rounds each time and you it's almost like we start with what's what's the big elephant in the room, what's the problem, what are the issues? And then we 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 shift this into the desired state. Yeah. And what I love mostly is this sense of acceptance of the self. And you mentioned earlier, don't judge yourself. If you're feeling XYZ, it's okay. We will work through this. Yeah, the key really is self love and self compassion. And we're so we're so programmed to beat ourselves up for anything that seems less than perfect. When, when we really want to be much more compassionate with ourselves. I, I like to say that self sabotage is simply misguided self love. Mm. So when you find yourself doing something that seems counterproductive to your goals, you know, it's like, oh, I procrastinating on this, or I ate something I shouldn't have eaten, or I forgot to make that phone call that was going to get me a new job or whatever it is. And then we beat ourselves up and say, I'm so stupid. No, 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 no. I was an act of self love. It was misguided. But our programming tells us, you know, oh, ice cream makes me happy. So what if I'm feeling upset, even though I know that I'm trying to lose weight, ice cream is going to save me in this moment. Or I, I really want to be successful, but I have all this programming telling me that rich people are greedy and bad, 
And if I made that phone call, I'd get a job that would really increase my income. And my parents would think that I was one of those bad people. And it's all happening unconsciously. But we sabotage our success because it doesn't feel safe. Mm. And so if we can have compassion for ourselves and say, wow, I really love and appreciate that part of me that just did that really seemingly stupid thing because it was trying to protect me. And now let me calm down the stress that was motivating that behavior. And I can look and find a healthier, happier, more successful way of addressing the situation. Amazing. Yeah. And do you think on some level that um, EFT can alter some of the unconscious beliefs that we have? Yeah, absolutely. Because we ha we hold on to these things. Uh, you had said something earlier about that. How we we it, it amplifies over time, because as human beings, we love to be right. Mm -hmm. We would rather be right than happy in most situations. So, using the example I used earlier of messing up on a speech in the third grade, and I make the decision I'm terrible at public speaking. I'm now going to go through life unconsciously, not not consciously or deliberately but unconsciously deliberately looking for examples to prove where I have to give another talk and, and I mess up on my words. Like, see, there's the proof. I was right about myself. I'm so smart that I know that I'm so bad at this. And so we will create that. And it's allowing ourselves to go back and say, even though I have this belief that I'm so bad at public speaking and we can clear it and recognize that's not true. I made a mistake. I, you know, I'm, I love public speaking. I just, just did another live workshop uh, two nights ago in New York. I, I, I love doing that. I am not a, I'm not perfect by any means. Just right there. I trip over my words because the thoughts sometimes go, come faster than my mouth can move. <laughs> so if I had this belief that I'm a terrible public speaker because I don't speak perfectly all the time, I wouldn't be able to make the difference that I get to make. So we want to clear that and just recognize, yeah, I'm not perfect at this. And that's okay because nobody's perfect. Mm. I'm curious, have did you ever have a year three a, in, in grade three, a mishap with public speaking <laughs> or in the classroom? Not that I remember. I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what, uh, what, what was grade three that uh, I don't remember anything. That, it's just one of the examples that has come up over the, the just thinking of what, like I'll often type when I'm introducing tap in, I'll say, let's, let's say uh, you're really angry at Bob, you know, oh, he did this stupid thing. I'm so angry at Bob. And I have no recollection of, of anyone that I know named Bob really pissing me off. So <laughs> <laughs> one of those things <laughs> Just coming up with, uh, with hypothetical situations. <laughs> Um, I really like the public speaking example because like I was an English teacher and in senior school, um, speeches were a part of the assessment. So students having to give the speeches. And it's funny because I noticed this more so in girls than in boys, where, where as soon as the students were notified in two weeks time, you have to do a speech on whatever novel or film they're studying the girls would be crying and lining up outside the coordinator's office, um, wanting some sort of exemption to only do the speech with their teacher and not the whole class. Yeah. And I'm talking a dozen students yeah. out of a hundred. Like yeah. it's, I, th I think that's a high percentage. And so I wish I knew this way back then in order to tell them, well, you're not going to need that exemption because here is a YouTube <laughs> video you're going to do every day for the next two weeks and we're going to get you on that stage. Yeah, yeah. We have all kinds of programming about why it's not safe to be seen. And, and unfortunately, you know, we've, I like to think that we've made progress, but I, there's still a lot of programming about how women are supposed to play smaller and not be seen and not be as successful. Mm -hmm. And so, especially those girls who are having the most upset, you know, who knows what's going on in their home life where, you know, it's always their dad who, who does all of the, these things and mom's just there to make dinner or, or whatever it might be. And it may not even be in their immediate family, but but other things that have gone on. And there's just all that programming that says for you to be up there speaking is going to be threatening to your well-being. 
Yeah. And it's, and that's what we definitely want to shift. Yeah. It must feel really good when you have clients that like are constantly coming back to you with these success stories. I think it's a privilege. It's uh I, I'm very blessed to get to do what I do. That's why I, I love uh, doing these live workshops because I, I get to see one. I often get to see clients that I've worked with online in person, but also having people come up who I've never met and, and just saying, this has made a profound difference in, in what I'm able to do. Mm-hmm. And so I was just, I just actually just shot a new video because I was telling people I, I have sometimes I, I use as my job title. I'm a gift unwrapper Aww. because people have gifts and talents to share with the world, but they're so wrapped up in, in fears. So I'm here to remove the wrapping paper. I, I always talk about the Michelangelo principle. I, well, I've got him back there, but, um, <laughs> you know, Michelangelo said the statues were already perfect inside the marble. I just had to chip away what didn't belong to reveal the masterpiece inside. Just it's gift unwrapping. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and there is this gift inside all of us. And it's, you know, being able to, to get rid of what what's holding us back so that we can go out there and share that and make the world a better place. This as this is that that was really inspirational. Um, I personally admire you, your work is incredible. Um, I anyone who I come in contact with um, and my clients, my students, I am putting them in touch. I said, just Google um, YouTube, Brad Yates. It's all you need to know. Remember those two words and you'll be, you know, there's a a shift um, and it's like stones, you know, it's leading them onto this path. Uh, the people that are exposed to EFT tapping because of the the shaft difference. I mean, I've tried it in the past for sleep, for stress, for for money, for um, physical illness. And each time I am, honestly, like we said before, it's the world around me changes, but really it's my internal world that has that impact on the external. Yeah. So, we create our reality, you know, for the, for the most part. And so as we, as we change and we change our minds about things, things change for us. Yeah. yeah. And the ego has a big part to play in all of this. Um, and like I, I did a training last month with William Whitecloud. Um, he's written a few books and um, he's a creative developer. I, th- I think he's got a very interesting title. Um, and he, he said something about, you know, God flipped a coin. He goes, what, what creates your reality? Is it your conscious beliefs or your unconscious? And he said, God, you know, flipped the coin and it landed on the unconscious beliefs. So if we can tap into that, um, that part of our psyche, part of our mind and unravel what's, what shouldn't be there and, you know, alter it and transform it into the positive, then our lives can you know, chalk and cheese. Yeah, absolutely. It's our, you know, it's, it's said that our, our conscious mind is five to 10% of our mind and the unconscious is 90 to 95%. So we're often talking about the things that we want, you know, whether it's more peace in our lives or more money in our lives or whatever. And so consciously we're saying, yes, I want this. I'm going to make this money. And unconsciously it's like, no, because remember rich people are greedy and bad and money is a lot of hard work. And if you made that much money, it would be devastating to your health and all these things. And so we're stopping ourselves at this unconscious level. So the extent to which we don't have what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we are resisting it. Mm not because we're bad or stupid, weak or lazy, but because we have programming telling us it's not safe. And so as we tap through the stress, because part of us will, will resist that and we won't even know why, but we'll be resisting it and we'll be sabotaging ourselves. And as we allow ourselves to address that, what am I afraid of in terms of making more money? What am I afraid of in terms of being in a relationship? And we start to get clear. It's like, yeah, maybe that's not true. You know, my parents said that rich people are greedy and evil, but there are a lot of rich people who are doing a lot of good and they're really nice people. And so it break that down and recognize that's what, that was a misunderstanding that my parents had. Yeah. And it may not even come from their personal experience, but from what their parents had been taught. And it's a, a whole bunch of, you know, misinformation passed down through generations. And 
you know, I do a lot of tapping around money, not because I'm, I'm one of these people that's like, I think everybody should be rich. And I'd love everyone to experience abundance. But for me, the main thing is, when we have limitations about how much money we should make, we're going to limit our gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. Because, it, well, if I shared my gifts and talents more, if I were more successful, I'd make more money and that'd be wrong. So I better play small with my gifts. Please don't do that. <laughs> Even even if it means you're going to make a lot of money, go out and share your gifts anyway. <laughs> mm, of course, yeah. People think they want money, <laughs> but it's what money that gives us that. It's it's the freedom and the opportunities. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then and there are people who have the belief it's just the money and they and they hoard it and it doesn't make them any happier. Of course not. So, yeah. you know. And it's just it's finding that uh, that place where we're able to live uh, with emotional freedom. That's why mm. I do emotional freedom techniques, having that emotional freedom, the freedom to make better choices and the freedom to create a life that we love. Mm. And even the word emotion, it's energy in motion. Just if people just if more people understood how your emotions impact, because they're the driving force of our lives. They drive most, if not all, of our choices. So yeah. true. Yeah. Whenever we're making a choice, for better or for worse, there's a, there's an emotion going on there, and we're not even most of the time we're not even aware of it. That's why we so often do something. And go, why did I do that? Yeah. Well, because of how you were emotionally feeling, <laughs> based yeah. based on an interpretation that was placed there, maybe when you were very very young. Yeah. And we we have no idea. I like to say we can look back at some of our worst choices and if you could open your brain and look at the neural pathways and all of the experiences leading up to that moment you'd go oh yeah i totally see why i did that in that moment that was the the best if not only choice that i felt that i could make yeah. even though even though consciously now looking at it i'd say oh i would never make that choice but at that moment it's like it was the only door open to me because of my circumstances and and my programming of course yeah um it's funny that you mentioned like emotions and how we're feeling in our choices because um earlier this year we got married and after the okay. wedding my mother-in-law thank you my mother-in-law asked me um did I pop something before the ceremony because I looked like I was like as in a pill like did I take something to calm me down because I was um she said I was gliding down the aisle and the other day we got the video back after all those months and I got to finally see myself so you know gliding down the aisle and I really did look so relaxed so calm and centered and the only thing that I did that morning was tap <laughs> getting ready in the car I tapped I tapped I tapped and I tried not to touch you know makeup right. And you have to make up, yeah. All yeah. That. So I was mostly, mostly, you know, the karate chop point on my hand and the collarbone. I kept doing that, and people were like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yep, I'm good. This is what I do." <laughs> but I think that made the biggest difference on the day. Excellent. So you're you're changing lives in just more ways than one, Brad. As are you. <laughs> thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Whether it's through the podcast or when you're teaching young minds. Thank you. Thanks. That means the world to me. Um, I am so grateful for your time, your energy, your humor, and everything in between. Uh, this has been an amazing conversation with you. I know we can talk on and on, and there'd be so many more specific um, examples, but I guess now the invitation is for the listeners to go and find Brad on YouTube, try EFT tapping, and really give it a go. Like, don't just, you know, try it and dis, but really focus and, and center yourself and really give it the time of day because I know, Brad knows, the science knows how much this can make a difference in your life. So thank you, Brad. Thank you. <laughs> this was great. <laughs> and you can find Brad on tapwithbrad.com and also check out his YouTube channel and please make sure you subscribe. Wherever you're listening from, if you can give us a review and a five-star rating, that would be so helpful in supporting this podcast. 
If this episode lights you up and inspires you, then please make sure that you share this podcast and make sure that you tag me on Instagram. I am beyond grateful and so blessed to call this work. It just means so much. Together, we will learn and grow. Staying anchored in your heart means staying anchored to your humanity. All my love, Natasha. Natasha.